Gangs in Liverpool. Gangs in Liverpool have been in existence since the early 19th century. There were also various sectarian political gangs based in and around the city during this period. During the 1960s and 1970s, gangs in Liverpool mainly focused on theft and armed robbery. In the late 1970s, drug crime became the new and most profitable way for gangs to earn money and made local criminals very wealthy in a short space of time. Liverpool's modern gang culture centres mainly on the drug trade. Merseyside police have reported in 2023 that as many as 120 gangs are operating around Merseyside. Dr Michael McElwee of Liverpool John Morse University and author of The Gangs of Liverpool states, You can learn lessons from the past and it's fascinating to compare the newspaper headlines of today with those from the late 1800s. The issues are exactly the same. People were worried about rising youth crime and the influence of a penny dreadfuls on people's behaviour. Like today, some commentators demanded longer prison sentences and even flogging while others called for better education and more youth clubs. History 1950-1970 In the 1950s and 1960s, organised crime in Liverpool still centred on more traditional forms of crime, such as armed robbery. Crime was controlled by local families who started to gain reputations in the city. One notorious figure from this era was Charlie Sager, who was the leader of one of the city's first safe-blowing gangs. Liverpool was steeped in poverty and local criminals turned to robbery to make money. Now in his late 70s, Sager said he is revolted by the violence which came to tear through the city due to the influx of drugs, and advised for young people not to go down the same path he did. Sega was quoted as saying in the 50s and 60s there was still a code amongst criminals, which meant you respected women, children and pensioners. But that is now long gone. In my view drug dealers have destroyed families across Liverpool and I want no part of that. He turned his back on his life of crime and is now a successful author. Liverpool Mafia. In 1969, career criminal Tommy Tacker, Comerford was part of a gang of robbers from the north of Liverpool who spent a bank holiday weekend tunnelling into a branch of the district bank on Water Street in Liverpool city centre, using a thermal lance to open the safe and stealing over £140,000 in cash and £20,000 in property, over a million pounds in today's currency. After his release from prison several years later, Comerford abandoned robbery and became involved in the drug trade. In the late 1970s, he formed the Liverpool Mafia, a group of white criminals who became Britain's first drug cartel and the richest crime group in the United Kingdom. He was seen as a pioneer, as one of the first Liverpudlians to become involved in international drug trafficking. 1980s In the early 1980s Liverpool was tagged by the media as Smack City or the Skag City, after it experienced an explosion in gang crime and heroin abuse, especially within the city's more deprived areas. At the same time several criminal gangs began developing into successful drug traffickers, including the Liverpool Mafia, which was the first such cartel to develop in the UK. As drugs became increasingly valuable, large distribution networks were developed with cocaine producers in South America, including the Cali Cartel. Over time, several Liverpool gangsters became increasingly wealthy, including Colin Smigath Smith, who had an estimated fortune of £200 million Christopher Little Ghost Warren and Curtis Cockier Warren, whose estimated wealth once saw him listed on the Sunday Times rich list. 1990s to 2000s Curtis Warren During the 1990s, Curtis Warren became one of the biggest drug lords in the UK and Europe. He was once listed as the International Criminal Police Organisation Interpol's target number one. Forging direct links with the Cali cartel, him and his gang flooded Europe with drugs. Warren left Liverpool after rival gangster David Unjai was shot dead, resulting in a spate of shootings during a local gang war, and headed for the Netherlands. He continued running his empire from Holland, but was eventually taken down by a dual effort by British and Dutch police. In 1998, Warren had made his only appearance in the Sunday Times Rich List, which stated as a property developer. Warren has spent the majority of the last 25 years in prison. He was released in November 2022 after serving 14 years in a maximum security prison. Colin Smith In 2007, Colin's Smigger Smith, one of Liverpool's cocaine kings, 
with an estimated personal fortune of £200 million, was executed at close range with a pump-action shotgun. The hit was reported by police to be the first sanctioned assassination by a Colombian cartel on UK soil. Smith's killing threatened a ferocious war between Britain's original drug syndicate, the Liverpool Mafia, and the largest Colombian cocaine suppliers to Europe, the Cali Cartel. Merseyside's crime gangs believed Colombian cartels ordered the hit on Smith over a missing consignment of the Class A narcotic worth, £72 million. Merseyside police reported at least one meeting in which the heads of Liverpool's cocaine trade met and agreed to avenge the death of Smith, a high-stakes player whose 1,000 kilograms deal sometimes affected the price of cocaine throughout Britain. Police throughout Europe were concerned that any attempt by Liverpool's gangs to target the Cali cartel's sophisticated cocaine distribution network would produce a spate of killings. Sources in Amsterdam, where Liverpudlians and Colombians operate together to disseminate cocaine across the continent, claimed that Liverpudlian expat dealers in Amsterdam, Spain, Portugal, Bulgaria, Turkey and South America, allied to the Merseyside Mafia, had been warned to prepare for a mafia-style bloodbath. Liverpool dealers retaliated by shooting one senior Colombian cocaine emissary in Amsterdam. 1990s Gang War A report in the Observer newspaper written by journalist Peter Beaumont entitled Gangsters Put Liverpool Top of Gun League, the 28th of May, 1995, noted that turf wars had erupted within Liverpool. The high levels of violence in the city came to a head in 1996 when, following the shooting of gangster David Unjai, six shootings occurred in seven days, prompting Merseyside police to become one of the first police forces in the country to openly carry weapons in the fight against gun crime. Official home office statistics revealed a total of 3,387 offences involving firearms had occurred in the Merseyside region during a four-year period between 1997 and 2001. It was revealed that Liverpool was the main centre for organised crime in the north of England. In 1999, a prominent turf war killing occurred when Warren Selkirk was shot five times and a bag of dog excrement placed in his hand while his children waited in a nearby car. Glaswegian Ian McAteer was convicted of the murder in 2001. The Highton Firm Organized crime and drug trafficking in the city is now believed to be largely controlled by a secretive cartel known as the Highton Firm, or Cantrell Farm Cartel, run by two brothers from the Highton area of Liverpool. They are internationally active and reported to be in the same circles as Europe's significant criminal factions from Ireland, Russia and North Africa. A senior Merseyside police detective said that the brothers operated on a different level to mainstream Merseyside criminals. In 2002 a young man from Liverpool's city centre went to work for the gang in southern Spain. Later that same year, his remains washed up on a gravel beach near Benel Medina. He had been tortured, suffocated and had his lower legs amputated. The man is said to have fallen foul of enforcers who worked for the Cantrell Farm Cartel. In 2010 the cartel became locked in a major fallout with a powerful drug gang rooted in speak. In particular, they were in dispute with a notorious member of the gang who was known as the Bird of Prey. The brothers were said to have flew a team of criminals over to Amsterdam to shoot their enemy. However, UK police sent over intelligence to their Dutch counterparts, which led to a raid by elite police. A group of Merseyside men were arrested and police also found an arsenal of weapons. The hall included battlefield weapons including assault rifles with silencers. The Serious Organised Crime Agency, SOCA, said that the crew had been sent to Amsterdam to assassinate a rival and that the feud was linked to a string of murders. Some of the men were found to have false passports, although police soon established their real identity. One man, said to be the leader of the gang, was jailed. It was reported the hit team was sent to assassinate a former Liverpool boxer who was a leading member of the Speak firm. Notable Gangs The Whitneys the Whitney Gang were a notorious family gang from the Anfield district of Liverpool. As of November 2011, all members of the Whitney Gang have been jailed for 82 years. The last member to be extradited from Spain was Anthony Tony, Whitney from his home in Denia where he got mixed up in another smuggling plot, and was apprehended for smuggling 50,000 tablets of an ecstasy-type substance. Curtis Warren Cartel 
The Curtis Warren cartel was one of the biggest cartels in the UK and Europe during its reign, forging direct links with the Cali cartel. Warren, the head of the cartel was formerly Interpol's Target 1 and was once listed on the Sunday Times Rich List, with an estimated fortune of £300 million. He owned casinos in Spain, discos in Turkey, a vineyard in Bulgaria, land in the Gambia, and money stashed away in Swiss bank accounts. On 24 October 1996, elite police tactical unit of the Dutch Brigade Speciale Bevelaging Sopdrachten raided Warren's villa, and other property he owned in the Netherlands. Warren and several associates were arrested, with police finding three guns, ammunition, and grenades. Crates with 960 CS Gauss canisters, 400 kilograms, 880 pounds, of cocaine, 1,500 kilograms, 3,300 pounds, of cannabis resin, 60 kilograms, 130 pounds, of heroin, 50 kilograms, 110 pounds, of ecstasy, and 400,000 Dutch guilder plus 600,000 US dollars in cash. The whole haul was estimated to be worth £125 million. The Liverpool Mafia The Liverpool Mafia is a term used for a long-standing drugs cartel which was started by Liverpool crime boss Tommy Attacker, comma forward. In the late 1970s, he formed the Liverpool Mafia, a group of white, middle-aged former armed robbers who, using corrupt port officials and protected by corrupt police, smuggled major quantities of amphetamine, cannabis, cocaine, heroin, and LSD through the Liverpool docks. The Liverpool Mafia gained strength by brokering a strategic alliance with young black gangs following the 1981 Toxteth riots, and became the richest crime group in the United Kingdom. John Hossa Firm John Hossa is a convicted drug dealer whose firm, which he ran with his nephew Paul Bennett, were involved in drug trafficking and many other forms or organized crime. They are career criminals with convictions for bank robbery and drug smuggling. In 1996, Hossa and Bennett were given a royal pardon 11 months into 18-year prison sentences for heroin smuggling, having provided information leading to the seizure of firearms. The Home Secretary, Michael Howard, was criticized for the decision, and in 2008 Hossa and Bennett were convicted of having set up the weapons fines to earn them their release and sentenced to 20 and 22 years in prison respectively. Michael Showers' Gang Michael Showers and his gang were some of the first drug lords to be established in the city of Liverpool. He famously flaunted his newfound wealth by driving around his childhood area of Toxteth in a white Rolls Royce and expensive suit. Showers was jailed for 20 years in 1991 after attempting to negotiate a route for £2 million worth of high-grade heroin to enter the UK. During the 1990s, his plot was thwarted by a police sting called Operation Rain Man. The Toxteth gangster was caught following the elaborate operation between British police and HM Customs and Excise, and their counterparts on the Indian subcontinent led to the seizure of 12 kilograms of the drug. In 2010, he was arrested in Turkey by a joint operation by the Turkish police and the British Serious Organised Crime Agency, SOCA. The drugs baron was reprimanded after being linked to alleged cannabis. International operations. Liverpudlian organized crime firms operate on a national and international level. This mainly focuses around the drug trade but also other forms of criminality. Crime groups from Liverpool are well known for trafficking drugs in the Netherlands, and it has also been suggested that distribution networks for illicit drugs within Ireland, the UK, and even allegedly some Mediterranean holiday resorts, are today controlled by various Liverpool gangs, in places such as Marbella and Ibiza. Thanks for watching and if you like the content please subscribe for more videos.